Okay, guys. Let's start. In times like these, being a citizen is a big job. Thank you for joining us to celebrate the virtues of self-rule and debate the state of our republic. Welcome to the Citizens Prerogative Podcast. This is the voice of your nerdy host, Michael Piscatelli, and we are inspired by a co-host whose passion for our republic precedes him everywhere he goes, Raymond Wong Jr. Thank you. Thank you. I think we're all feeling very, very happy in comparison to Prime Minister Truss. <laughs> are you kidding me? She gets to set, she's in the history books. She set a record. Good for her. Not all of us get that opportunity. I hope she enjoys it. This is episode number 61. We're still in season three. The title of this episode is going to give you a clue about what we're talking about today. The freedom to pursue happiness. I hope Liz is happy. It has been a while since we discussed the ideas of freedom in the United States. And this time around, we're going to marry it up with the pursuit of happiness. We're also going to focus maybe on some Stoic teachings coming from ancient philosophy, ancient wisdom, to help us guide our discussion. After all, the ancients were locked in their heads just like us, and whether it's Rome or the United States, their internal mental struggles were all the same. Thankfully, we have access to some of their writings um, and in particular, some people's journals. Uh, so we're intimately familiar with the thoughts that they were experiencing and they're ridiculously rhymy with the thoughts we tend to have these days. Although I don't think thousands of years of history shouldn't surprise how little we've changed, how we think about things or the human condition. You know, that's at the end of the day, the human condition is the struggle we all experience in our minds. Back to freedom. <laughs> freedom is the ability to use one's own agency to affect change in their life. We were talking in the last episode a little bit about reason and the fact that what we have control over also come, you know, to borrow from stoicism, the dichotomy of control says we only have control over what we think, how we act, things like that. Everything else is an externality. Everything else is something that happens to us. And all we can do is choose our understanding of it and our response of it. So using our own agency to affect change in our lives is really the only way to address certain things, whether it be to change one's class, whether to change their profession, to change their companions, or most importantly, your own mind. We are all on a journey. Every human is on a journey to achieve some level of self-awareness, I hope. And through that, understanding your own mind and the onboard observer that is your consciousness, right? Your brain is a, a tool, a mechanism, software, hardware combination, but you are not your thoughts. You are not your emotions. You are the consciousness that is in the driver's seat, that is in the captain's chair of your body, which ends up being a spaceship. <laughs> now we're going to pivot to government because in the system we have set up, the ability to exercise one's own agency and freedom really comes from rule of law. It, the idea that we should all have equal rights and justice under a set of laws, regardless of what another human feels they should dictate for us. Government acts as the civilian interface between individuals and groups. It mediates the boundaries where our lives intersect. The law is there to bring any conflicts to a conclusion not necessary am necessarily amicably or fair, but to bring it to an end. And it's through the laws that have to evolve in ways if fairness is our concern as a society to find new and better ways to get that into law. 
together with the government and law, they help enable freedom. And that's, in effect, keeping others from treading too heavily on our own pursuit of happiness and keeping us from trespassing on others' pursuit of happiness. So when I was talking about conflict, the conflict, the root of all of it is when any one of us or a group of us trespasses right on the pursuit of happiness of another. And we should all have, you know, equal rights. We use that term just to indicate that it, the idea is egalitarian, that we all have, we should all have this access, that my liberty is not more valuable or more important than your liberty. And that we have to find out where these things intersect and mediate those differences as best we can. And it's never very clean or easy. Um, which is how we end up with everything that we have today. You know, thinking about this old religious thing of the, it's not, it, it's basically within the Bible, I believe that the meek shall inherit the earth. This idea that you are supposed to accept something lesser than what is so meek. I haven't seen that in the constitution. You know, there, there, there is no description that says that's your existence. That's you, what you receive. The meek shall inherit the earth is what the old age gave us. The new scripture, the new word in a sense uh, of, of that, that cascades across all citizens of this nation is that we have a right to happiness. This is not about religion i think happiness religion are are two separate things but i i believe that religion was meant to keep you content with your lot in life it's highly designed to only make you believe you have a right to so much experience and that you're supposed to defer happiness well, those two things are at odds. The constitution that you're given when you're born in this nation and an old indoctrination that still exists to this day and people still apply to you whether you believe in that book or not. We, we see it happening, right? Uh, rights are separate. Happiness is not achieved through scholarly means, be it a Bible or academia there is there is a human experience and a dignity that each of us have a right to define individually and attain here here well put that's a good transition into this other comment here how best to choose a life for oneself how shall we make ourselves accountable for pursuing happiness making that our goal um, and being cautious about the means we use to achieve that happiness. There is nothing in school. There is nothing in church that truly prepares one to live a fulfilling purpose driven life. That one is on us. It is left to each of us to look inside and understand ourselves. What is our motivation? What is it when, what are we doing when we lose track of time? What are the hopes and dreams that we have? But beyond that, what actually makes us happy? Those things really come from inside. These are extensions of the human condition. And it's a unique thing for each and every one of us. This is why it's so critical and core to go through the process of self-examination and reflection to achieve a greater understanding of who you, who is that onboard observer? Who is that consciousness in the captain's chair, right? You are, you are the captain of a spaceship that is inhabited by many organisms who also all want to live. We all, every organism on your ship has a vested interest in the survival and happiness 
of that experience and that existence, because that is, that is where good feelings come from. This is where joy lives. And make no mistake, you know, those signals, those sensations, those feelings, they are real signals. They're signals from our old school friend or fro, friend, excuse me, friend or foe, like threat detection system, you know, who's going to be a friend, who's, who's not, who's going to attack us, things of that nature. You know, it's all kind of wrapped up in some of that sub-programming. It's not necessarily something we're good at conscientiously understanding in the moment because taking time to understand things in the moment used to mean possible death <laughs> in the wild. We're not in the wild anymore, but uh, sometimes it does seem that way. Um, I'm not going to talk about guns. But this idea of having a purpose-driven life, one where your actions, your thoughts, your words are informed by an innate understanding, a core awareness of who you are as a human being and what your values are, not what you've been told values are, not what you've observed other people's values of being. Who is in the captain's seat of your spaceship? Who is running the show upstairs? Who's receiving all the information, getting all the visual input, the audio input, the emotional input, and all the other signals that come as metadata applied to our existence of reality through a mechanism we call the brain? Self-examination is required to really tease out some of that purpose. And it's through that purpose and through following and hoping to attain that purpose, maybe never actually achieving it, but it's through the acts of trying to achieve that purpose, that happiness emerges, that inner joy of just doing the right thing. Um, because we only live in a moment. We don't live in the past. We don't live in the future. We only live in right now. And if we want to experience joy right now, then we need to be acting in accordance with our purpose. Thankfully, we have a system under laws that gives us a framework so that we can choose the behaviors that you know work the best for us. I mean, that's kind of the core idea under liberty. The liberty is, is really around having that freedom of choice to figure out what your purpose is, what makes you happy, and, and then to be able to pursue it. And no core joy, no core happiness comes from murdering others. No core joy, no core happiness comes from tearing others down, destroying things we've built together. That is not the nature of the human. The human nature is to collaborate and build things together. Tribalism comes with us, you know, but it's a choice. Hate comes with us, but it's a choice, just like love and joy. Hunting. Hunting's a choice. It was a matter of survival, right? And and I'm sure we ate a lot of things, not just large game and deer. I'm sure we ate everything that came across our path. So, you know, we're not even hunting like we would have. A good grub, I'm sure, would have been tasty if cooked just right. Hopefully you had cooking by that time. And I think that happiness and liberty, and this is a common theme, you know, there's a capacity that's given to the American people when we, they're given things like health care, right? When you obtained health care, it probably was life changing for you and you experienced freedom to, you know, take greater risk to probably, you probably do things understanding that you have health care and you can go on trips or you maybe can bungee jump and do these things because maybe there's just an extra protection in case you're injured. This this freedom that we experience as citizens when we get it from the corporations or we attain it for ourselves by self-funding, um, these liberties and such, it's they're kind of described they're, they're, they're hidden as something that's limited and held back. And really more and more, if we are capitalists, and that's been an argument since the beginning, right? Is that if we are a capitalist society, then freedom, liberty, and these components must the definition and root must be tied to having these capitalistic mechanisms, which we know make a successful citizen, right? Any Everything that exists in our capitalist society today is to make you the best citizen you can be, 
uh, and, and most profitable citizen you can be. It, it does nothing but enable that. We're just saying that everyone should have the, the baseline version of it. I love that because you can't have capitalism without collaboration and cooperation. Capitalism doesn't work. It doesn't mean there isn't mistrust and greed built into it. And, you know, we need to mitigate those parts, but greed and mistrust are a choice. It well, doesn't exist a, everywhere, right? What's a contract? Right? What, what mm -hmm. causes you, besides the threat of litigation and the tr trust that the, lit the, the litigation will go through a judicial system that's trustworthy, right? Like it's all, it's the whole system is frankly, you and I agreeing that dollar is worth the same value. And we pull it off across an entire nation with people we've never met, right? It's, we, we, we have the capacity for collaboration and that's the basic one, just money. And the fact that one means one and two means two in mathematics, right? We do have to agree to that. And it's agreed across the entire, across the entire earth in a sense. Yes, and it's the only source of um, building anything greater. Like, <laughs> the humans can't survive alone, much less build anything of greatness or worth if we're not working together. So if, if you can at least just take that fundamental seed away and understand that is the core of who we are as animals, and it began in our collective survival together out in the wild... Yeah. And now it's evolved into skyscrapers. Yeah, it's not aliens that built the, the I just I'm sorry if I'm oh man. So but it's not aliens that built the pyramids. Okay, it is it is just collaboration. Imagine if you had nothing else to do, your society had reached a new peak, a new pinnacle of agrarian evolution, right? You have all this food and everyone has time to sit around and ponder. There's great things that come out of collaboration of our people. And we're at that moment again, we're at an inflection point where technology can either better our lives or we can just sit back and let it take over. And happiness is not going to come from letting technology decide what makes us happy. That's the trend right now, by the way. Technology is feeding us what makes us, it feeds us our emotion. It's not even happiness. That's for another episode. I'm going to try not to stoke my anxiety on that one. You know what'll help? Taking a quick break. Time for a message from our sponsor, Citizen Do Good. Politics is war, simply without bloodshed. An old adage that rings true to today more than ever. The war for liberty and justice for us all is never over, and every battle counts. Our republic still holds the promise of our freedom and it is up to us to unleash its potential. The time is now to reimagine ourselves and our systems of governance for the dawning of a new age. We are a proud sponsor of the Citizens Prerogative Podcast, a major partner in spreading the good word about civic love and the power of change for us all. At Citizen Do Good, we plan to continue having these conversations so that all citizens are encouraged to invest in themselves and in their communities. Keeping that goal in mind, we need your help to stay on mission and grow this community. Help spread the word by sharing your favorite post or Citizens Prerogative podcast episode from our sponsor's Facebook page, Citizen Do Good. Feel free to use the hashtag CDG when you share. Also, free fair, excuse me, feel free to share any suggestions you have directly through our Contact Us page at citizendogood.com or comment on any of our posts or items at Citizen Do Good's Facebook page. Thanks for your support. I know we were just recently talking about reason. And I think one of the things I try to ask myself more and more is, you know, if I if I was to pass today, if I was to end my life. Not personally, but like I, I do it myself. But I mean, it just the the time has come where it's the end of life. Am I going to be satisfied with what I've done thus far? And, and I think that's a hard question to ask yourself, or because I think a lot of us focus on how much time we have left. But what if it stopped today? Have you put in the amount of thought? Did you do that one thing that you wanted to do? Read that one book? Did you take that trip? Did you focus the energy 
to pursue happiness. Because to me, happiness is a race against death, right? To accomplish the things that you care about most, the things that were part of you when you were young, and that you carried into your, your adulthood as core to your existence, the reason you do it. If you're trying to reach retirement, I think happiness is being able to experience micro doses of what that'll be in the meantime, right? In the meantime, you, you sometimes it's a journey, but but in the meantime, did you at least get a taste of what you wanted? Very pointed. That also borrows on some ancient philosophy around the idea that we should contemplate and meditate on loss, whether it's the loss of our own lives in the next hour because of an aneurysm or the loss of an object in our life that we feel is precious or the loss of our home or our shelter, because these things at the end of the day actually have nothing to do with our happiness. It all comes from inside and it can be there right now. We only live in the moment. Again, the past is gone and tomorrow is never guaranteed. The next hour is never guaranteed. Consider that. Would you be happy right now? Do you have the capacity to experience joy and gratitude for what you've already learned, gained, and taught other people? That has to come from within us. It's the only place it truly exists, especially if you want it. There's only one place to get it. It's inside of you. We have a limited time here on earth. Try not to spend too much of it angry. Try not to spend too much of it fearful. And try not to spend too much of it wanting. Look for any reason to be grateful. Focus your energy on what is in your control and not outside of it. And remember to keep growing. You know, the pursuit aspect of this we haven't focused too much on. But ultimately, at the end of the day, that's really what it's all about. We say happiness and joy. Those are an ends, but the means is the pursuit. And the quality of the pursuit is everything if you're going to have joy in this moment. If you focus on the things you don't have that you deserve, you're inviting envy. If you focus on the things you have achieved, the things you do have, the disadvantages you don't face, do you have all of your limbs, all of your eyes? Can you hear everything? Can you see everything? Can you feel everything? There are people who can't feel love out there. We should have some empathy, I suppose, for that. But more to the point, be having gratitude for being able to experience and share those sensations among and with one another. We would also challenge you to learn more about fulfilling your purpose, something that you feel compelled to create, which is all a part of the pursuit of happiness. To be able to explore what you're compelled to create or you hope you see in the world, to be the change you wish existed when you were a child or an adult, or right now, okay? Explore what it is that motivates you and brings you happiness. Grow it. Share it with others for community's sake. This idea of collaboration isn't just about building things outside of ourselves. It's about building connection between and among one another. Why? Because we're all a captain in a chair in our heads trying to get through this one life that really doesn't make any sense. But we're here and we're doing it and we all are sharing the experience whether we choose to acknowledge it or not. It's left up to each of us to find our path in life and seek fulfillment through growth and through community building. We are not building community as we move through our careers and lives if our purpose seems aimless. You know, we need to have a sense of where, where it is that we experience that joy. And this idea that, well, I'm just different. I'm programmed different. I'm a different type of person, right? 
um, you know, when, when an experiment has been done so many times over, it's been refined, you know, we, we kind of talk about the insects, about how they're so evolved and they're so excited, but, but we are evolved for collaboration. We are weak in physical structure and we don't have an exoskeleton, right? But what we, we did evolve with how we survived on this earth and became the dominant species, if you will, in some ways, is through that core collaborative art. And it's not a science. This is not something that's perfect. No one has a corner on collaboration or the happiness or fear that comes out of it. The collaboration is the human experience, actually. Yeah, very powerful. One of the other maybe final calls to action we have here is to learn more about the history of the United States and really philosophy in general, to get grounded in something closer to fact than fiction. Philosophy, we have a very special reverence for this ancient wisdom that asks us to question things and to question ourselves and to better understand our place in time and how it is that we could bring benefit, how we can grow to benefit others, to think well and develop an ever-growing awareness of things in general. It reminds me of a recent entry I was reading in the book of um, uh, The Daily Laws by Robert Greene. And one of the entries was about accepting others as facts accept other people as facts. Pretend you're an astronomer and you're observing a planet for the first time. There's no value in judging that planet because it's the wrong color, shape, size, or it spins in the wrong way. No, an astronomer is going to be fascinated and excited and extra curious why this thing is so different from all the rest. Why is it so unique? It's a similar vein in anthropology because most people really, for some reason, can't associate themselves with the idea of, which is a bad idea, like a caveman, right? It's a judgment to say that our ancestors were cavemen. Our ancestors were various forms of species that are related to us. We came from them. And as an anthropologist, you have to be able to look back at these bones and you have to look back at these artifacts and and see them for what they are and minimize or eliminate any judgment you're bringing to it because of your own bias or perspective or really emotional response. I mean, that's where meditation comes in. It allows you to see the emotional response coming in from something, analyze it, decide, oh, I understand where this came from, but I don't need to act on it. I don't need to make a judgment on it. I can just observe things and people as they are. And when we observe ourselves, it's important that we have the same perspective, that we accept what's there. And if we don't like it, we have the power to change it. And we should for good reason, not because someone else told us, but because when I feel this way and I act out on it, I get bad results consistently. I don't want bad results. Let me stop acting on this thing. Let me understand where it's coming from. Maybe it'll go away if I stop feeding it and entertaining it. It's difficult. It's a practice. And this is something that comes to us really from philosophy, I I would say. Another point under this um, goes aligned with, you know, learning about philosophy for the purpose of helping you understand yourself a little bit better, the history of the United States for understanding how the heck we got where we are right now, because it's the world you're living in as a U.S. citizen. Um, Learn something new and do it often. The truth is documented. Um, everything that was done before our time, or even the time of the internet or whatnot, there, there is evidence of things out there. And then if you want to be on the cutting edge, you want to understand a little bit better about the hardware you're operating, your spaceship, learn about some science, like pick up a book about breathing. I mean, you take it for granted every day, but there's a lot of interesting insights and and capabilities and and tips and tricks to help operate your spaceship the best way 
we know how with our collective wisdom, our collaborative knowledge that we've been creating all of these, all of these ages. So actually, it's not very long. Science is not that old. <laughs> um, and we need to leverage it for the best of us. So books, magazines, documentaries, podcasts, <laughs> and online course lectures are, are all means to an ends of, of understanding things a little bit better. But it takes each of us to invest a little bit of time, a lot of curiosity to understand ourselves a little better for our pursuit of happiness. It really will help us talk about a little bit more than the weather and make sure you support these organizations that have the right ideals and vision um, that, that, that matters to you. Everyone has their own truth. We're not here to tell you who to support, but please support those, uh, especially those individual or independent, independent media sources, I think are really important for just the, the health of our overall democracy. That's the beauty of at least the freedom of the press. It does allow us to be out there and engaged and holding people accountable at all different levels. And I'll just stress that, um, we said it in a behind the scenes, but pod save America, I think that was called it, it is, it just taught me that January 6th wasn't the first incident where there was a major coup attempted, that it's actually happened before. It had outside influencers. Um, and so it's a very interesting things you find out constantly. And I think that's important. You know, my happiness is to always be inspired and learn through history, um, which, which constantly happens because I try to be open to a lot of different ideas outside of my own. Excellent play on the history angle. Thank you. I'm going to do one more quick pivot before we finish this up about change and the fact that there's nothing we can do to change anyone else. It's not our role in life. So when we talk about observing others like a new artifact, that's important. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't be friends to others. More importantly, we shouldn't get hung up in trying to control, manipulate, or change others. All we can do is change ourselves. All we can do is be an example of something better, of something different. We can attract people towards change. We can inspire people towards change. We cannot make anyone do anything. So it kind of comes back to that phrase of if you really do need to see some change around you in some people, all you can do is try to be that change, act that change, and hope they pick up the signal and they make the decision to change themselves if it is truly something that's beneficial for them. That's all we have. That's all that's in our power. We only have our thoughts and our actions. And we cannot and should not be hung up on the idea of trying to control anyone else. Our lives are short. We need to pursue our happiness. And we can be an example to others. With that, we'll call it a wrap. We have been your hosts. Thank you to Mr. Raymond Wong Jr. And thank you, Mr. Piscatelli. We are truly two planetary bodies, opposite in gravity, but close close enough to make a difference oh praise the universe <laughs> this has been something that's for sure for information on this and other episodes head over to citizendogood.com and click on podcast while you're there hit up the contact us page and leave a comment we'd love to hear from the community and special thanks to your listeners. We save the best for last. You are the best and you have been for years. Thank you for your support. We know it's painful and we love you. Intro music sampled from OK Class by Ozzy Jock under Creative Commons license through freemusicarchive.org. Other music provided royalty free through Fizzly and Studios Inc. <laughs>